Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker. In this video, I'm going to go over three things. Number one is a hand history from the forum played at NL100, where we go over both the hand itself and the comments in the forum to see how we can maybe help the players making the comments improve their thought process. And number two, we're going to go through a high stakes hand and talk about what the players may have been thinking and what are the dynamics of the spot. And number three, I want to tell you guys a bit about my course that's launching on Upswing Poker. First hand against BB, big blind ever, broken stack fish it seems, flop could be an overbet. Turn could be as well, especially with my flop sizing, so I don't love my turn sizing. Are you good enough on this river here against a total broken stack or known to have this as an easy call? Thanks. So, hero raises button with ace-10, big blind calls, we get ace-king-7, two-tone board. Hero bets 2 into 5.5, gets called. Turn 9, hero bets 8, gets called. And then villain donk bets river for lower than half pot. I do think this is a, a very good question. It's a very interesting hand. We'll start out by, by digging through the comments and kind of comment on those. So Koss is saying, against that size, I beat him into the pot. If he bombs it, that's when I get nervous. I think this is a good way to think about it. You can think about what size of pot does ace-10 want. And this is roughly the pot size that you want. Like, if I could, I would have bet river for half pot if I wasn't afraid of getting raised. So when my opponent is betting lower than half pot, in a way, ace-10 is not a very foldable hand. This is the pot size that's appropriate for ace-10. So unless you're doing some sick soul reading, which is tough to do against someone who's taking a weird line, we know nothing about him, he has a broken stack, you kind of have to call. I wouldn't be excited about it, like costs beating him into the pot. In terms of like, is he value betting or is he bluffing? You're probably running into something like ace-5 or king-5 a lot of the time here and you'll probably beat a decent amount. But I don't know enough and the entire play is so random and putting in so much, so little money. I would probably end up calling and, and think of this more as a crying call because he sized low enough. Part of the issue here on the river is a lot of guys do not donk bet bluff the river on complete bricks. So I'm not expecting to see many bluffs from Villain. But I'm not sure what his value betting threshold is. Maybe he has ace 10 or ace 8 or ace 4. Maybe he does bluff because he doesn't understand initiative too much. Like that, there are a bit too many unknowns for me to fold this hand, but it's definitely not a slam dunk. So new guy here is asking, did he tank for a bit or bet quickly? I'm, I'm not sure that's relevant, but yeah, he didn't tank forever, but took a few moments. Here we have new guy here saying, one trick I learned is when a fish takes a little time and bets half pot on the river, it's generally a bluff. This is generally, a, generally it's correct that half potish bets are a bit weak from recreationals, but I don't think this is a spot where it's correct with the, the dong betting specifically is, is, a, is a different nuance. And let's see if there's anything else. Basic concept says call, miss draws, flop. Sort of, I, I think this is not the thought process because had this been a big bet, I would fold. Uh, but you definitely like it. It helps that the draws missed since that helps to see a bluffing range. And let's kind of finish through. So on guard, it is saying, I think that raising is better than folding. It's a super clear call. I expect to win over half the time. Because donk bets lack credibility, half pot bets lack credibility, it could be bluffing, a weird merge bet, a worse ace, trying to keep us from going bigger. I guess I, I would kind of agree with this post. Like, there is too much unknown going on in the hand to make a big fold. And yeah, I think that's it. You know, a lot of guys might snap call. I, I think the, the big takeaway uh, from this hand is that it's like villain sizing is extremely important and the runout is important. So if the runout is a club, maybe this guy turns a pair into a bluff. If a runout pairs the king, maybe he turns a flush draw into a bluff. But when the runout is a random brick, the likelihood of a bluff is a lot lower. 
So we're more thinking, how do we do versus this betting range? And so we're really focused on the sizing. And when the sizing is small enough, it feels random enough that you can call with ace 10, but yeah, not super excited. Before the next hand, I want to mention that my new course is live on Upswing Poker, Elite Cash Game Exploits. During the first week, you get my two previous courses for free if you purchase, and that is ending fairly soon. So anyone who wants to check that out, I highly recommend it. I think the course is very good, very valuable, and should be part of any player's arsenal. So last hand is going to be a high stakes hand between Mama Karma and Vice and Fish. Mama Karma raises. Vice and Fish 3 bets the big blind around 5x and Mama Karma, Mama Karma calls from the button. We get a 10 9 3 2 tone board. Big blind versus button. This is a relatively good board for big blind. You know, all of your broadways are worth something. All of your over pairs are over pairs. That's always a big important thing. So, fairly nice board. Vice and Fish bets half pot. This could be kind of wide and mergy in terms of hands. Probably not so much pocket sevens or ace. Yeah, not so much pocket sevens in there as other hands. Turn queen. Queen is like a really connecting card. It makes it so that there is kind of a shift in ranges because I guess this is a big thing even with the preflop sizing. So vice and fish three bet big. Versus a big 3-bet, Mama Karma probably has to fold King Jack off. That's a really big thing on a queen. Like, does your opponent have King Jack off and Queen 10 off, or only the suited version? If you 3-bet small, where you think he has to have the offsuit version of his Broadways, and this card should really freeze you up. Well, if you 3-bet big, the amount of hands that your opponent has that improved is actually a lot lower. And you can probably keep value betting fairly aggressively with a hand like pocket kings or ace queen or something like that. So vice and fish bets, mana karma calls, we get the eight of diamonds river. Huge equity shifting card because if you're vice and fish and you had two pair or a set or an over pair, now this card comes, those hands that were before going for value are now kind of just turned into bluff catchers. So this is an equity shift in card in a sense that Vice and Fish, you know, checks the river, but he should also be checking a lot of strong hands. So that it's not like you check aces and kings and bet everything else, but bet your range is actually a bit more defended. And here's something pretty cool happens. So Mama Karma bets 20-ish percent pot in position on the river. Now, this is a bet size that you should very rarely see on the river, if ever. Okay, so in theory, the issue is that when you're on the river and you bet, you are reopening the action to your opponent. And that means you can't value bet super small and super thin because it's just not worth reopening the action. And this is certainly one of those spots where there might be a price to reopening the action. Right? Like if Ice and Fish has a jack and checks it and, and you bet this size, he can check raise you with a jack. And that's usually, like, these bets are usually theoretically wrong. So making this bet either implies Mama Karma thinks this is a unique situation where both players have a lot of one-card straights and you're just kind of forced to value bet small. And maybe he value bets only straights. He thinks this is a size. You know, if you value bet only straights, maybe you don't mind reopening the action because, you know, you're, you're calling any raise and chopping for the most part. And he just thinks this is the correct size. Personally, I, I would have expected that he can go a bit bigger. So this seems like a bit of a blunder to me. Here, Vice and Fish check shoves, which, you know, presumably he could do with any jack. Mama Karma calls and we see the showdown. Mama Karma with Queen Jack, standard played hand on flop and on turn. River sizing feels too small to me. And preflop, I think, is questionable. I'm, I'm not sure this hand can make it preflop, but it, it's probably close. And maybe some low frequency. Vice and Fish, on the other hand, shows King Jack. For the super nuts, he actually scoops the pot with a higher straight. Again, I think his, his play in the entire hand makes sense, including the check on the river. Like we said, this is a river where his range kind of has to play more defensively. So... You do that by, by checking your strong hands as well. So I think well played hand. Nice big pot there going his way. 
that's it for this video, guys. If you haven't, check out the new course. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.